All right, the Audible is on the air on this Wednesday afternoon. Kim Bocamp or Alan Pupar from MiamiDolphins.com joins us here on the program. If you want to get a hold of of Alan uh, via Twitter, it's at A Pupar, P O U P A R T, Fins. You can go ahead and get them that way. You're watching us on Periscope. You can send your questions via uh, Twitter. Just hashtag the Audible. You can see us on a rebroadcast basis on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page beginning tomorrow. And you can watch us on MiamiDolphins.com. So those are all the ways to see us. Get your questions in. Just hashtag the Audible through Twitter. And we'll go ahead and get you up, get up to speed with everything you want to talk about. Um, and I see on my thing, wash my wash your mugs is the start of the uh, the program here. So we got new bug new mugs. Monday, Ticketmaster jumped in to, uh, to help sponsor us a little bit, and they gave us some nice mugs. Unfortunately, they only have us two mugs. I'm not sure who was drinking out of yours on Monday. I can only hope Let's just watched. assume Let's that Leon, now this is assuming a lot, that my producer Leon did his job and washed these mugs. Yes, one can only now, hope. Yeah, one can only hope. And, you know, you, see, you know it's, it's hard to have faith in them, but I'm going to have faith and go ahead and drink out of my mug and hope that. Okay, I'll join you. Mm, Hope that I make it to New York on Sunday without some, without an arm falling off or an ear, you know, being consumed by my head or. Hope you're making it there by Saturday because like that. that's when they play. Yeah, well, whatever it is. <laughs> so you're going, I'm so there's used, already, there's already I'm, something wrong. I'm with so it. used to Sunday. It's uh, you know you can't get past that. But Saturday night, man. It, it's you know what? It, it from everything. I have a daughter up there. I've been talking to her. From everything I can see, it is going to be a cold, damp, if not snowy which they're saying about 40 degrees and, and 80% chance of rain, which would make it the most miserable conditions ever to be in to play football or watch football, for that matter. It's going to make last Sunday at Hard Rock Stadium yeah, like look, a walk in the park. Like a walk in the park, and it was uh, anything but that. But, uh, all right, big game for the uh, for the Dolphins again. Uh, the Jets, you look at the Jets, they're, they're in disarray. Uh, you know, Tuesdays when you, you start, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday when you start kind of getting the information, start looking ahead to your opponent. And I'm looking at their probable starters for the uh, for the Jets, and you got Brandon Marshall, Brandon Bostick, uh, the tight end, Ben uh, Aliana, James Carpenter. This is their offensive line: Wesley Johnson, Brian Winters, and Brino Gio- Giacomini. That's their offensive line. Not not necessarily a who's who, more of a who's who are these guys. No, um, they, they have two Pro Bowl guys with Ryan Clady and Nick Mangold, and they're both on yeah, IR. Yeah, Clady's on IR. Mangold was put on IR last week or the week before. Two of their best uh, two best offensive linemen out. Uh, beyond, and you look at their wide receivers, beyond Brandon Marshall, Quincy en- en- Enua, Enua, Robbie Anderson, and uh, Bryce Petty is the man that will be hoisting the rock in their direction. Hoisting the rock, I like that. Hoisting the rock in their direction, yeah. So it's or, or uh, throwing the ball. The, the Jets are certainly a football team, and then and then Matt Forte probably going to be a game time decision. Fresh off the press. Look at that, fresh off the press, right here. Trey, come on, get a little air time. <laughs> Make sure you get a little air time. Trey brings in a good a good scouting report that I can read. <laughs> gives us a nice little look, a nice little thumbs up, and I think he gets scale for that. I think he gets two dollars and fifty cents for the uh, for appearing on camera on this program. Uh, let, let's take a look at the uh, the injury report for the Dolphins. Uh, Caduce uh, is on the injury list, but he practiced in full speed. Brandon Albert was full. Kiko uh, Alonzo limited by the hamstring, and the hand more the hamstring. Uh, Jelani Jenkins continues to be limited. Uh, he's got the knee in the hand. Bobby McCain was full. Spencer Pacinger full. Anthony Steen full. Ryan Tannehill obviously didn't practice, and Mario Williams was limited. For the Jets, uh, Bostic uh, didn't practice. I uh, told you he's on the well, – well, he's well, he's a backup guy there. Mike Cap, uh, Catapuano, knee, line, linebacker, didn't practice. Matt Forte didn't practice. Uh, Lorenzo Malden didn't practice. Steve McClendon, defensive tackle, didn't practice. They, they Let me just put it this way. Buster Screen didn't practice. They look mer- very much like a team that's out of it and has three games left to play, and, and, the, uh, and the rats are jumping off the ship. Pretty much. But they are coming off a win. They are coming off a win, and look, they got that defense. It's still – I know they've given up some yards rushing in the last couple of weeks, um, but but there's certainly a defense that you, you've you got to be prepared for. Well, that, yeah, that defensive line is brutal with yep. Wilkerson, Richardson, and Leonard Williams. But, yeah, the, when they came here in November, the Jets were number one in the NFL against the run. They're now 17th. Yep. I mean, 
49ers last week, I believe, was 246 yep. yards or something. Yeah, so a lot of success against yeah, them. Yeah, they've so. had their issues. Yep. But their defensive line's really good. Yep. You're watching The Audible, presented by Ticketmaster. As I said, you can go ahead and send your questions. Just hashtag The Audible via Twitter. You can watch us on a rebroadcast on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page beginning tomorrow and on MiamiDolphins.com. Let's get a couple questions here. Philip A. Hernandez, what's the future of our O-line now with Pouncey on IRR? Let me go over a couple of these things that well, weren't out there yesterday. Mike Pouncey, or Wednesday – when we were here on Monday, Mike Pouncey has been put on the injury reserve. He's out for the rest of the season. Um, talking to Adam Gay, he said it was my call. He decided to make the decision. It wasn't a conversation with Pouncey. And, and I think Adam, I, I think Alan, I mean, we, uh, we both agree that this is a move to benefit Mike's career and lengthen his career as much as possible. Well, yeah, there's a big risk involved if you yeah. put him back there and he's not, I mean, totally back healthy with that thing. I mean, it's been going on. He's had setbacks, so... Uh, it's the prudent thing to do. So the future of our O-line now with Pouncey on IR, there's a question whether Anthony Steen, who's really struggled in the last couple of weeks, struggled, struggled snapping the ball, struggled with his blocking scheme, tr- struggled with communication, and a lot of things out there. So there's a question whether Craig Urbeck may step in and play the center going on this week. Or Urbeck's got some dealing with some injuries uh, too along the way. So uh, I think that's something we're going to have to wait and see. Have you got, you got any any information that I don't have concerning well, that? I think the feeling now is that it's still going to be Steen yeah. for the time being, and then they're going to keep evaluating. Obviously, if things don't go well in the middle of the, the offensive yeah. line, they may move to her, but for now, I think the feeling is going to be it's Steen again. And then uh, week by week, you hope that Brandon Albert gets yep. increasingly healthy and then Tunsil's injury yep. issues are in the past. In fact, he doesn't even show up on the injury right. board anymore. So. Yeah, and I think that's the case. I think Tunsil played pretty well last week. Brandon played pretty well, although he's kind of involved in the uh, – in the play that got that Ryan Tannehill injured his knee on. Great news on Ryan Tannehill though after the after Monday, uh, in that he doesn't need to have uh, surgery and all that. So the Dolphins did get some good news. Hey, also coming up is the Pro Bowl uh, voting is done by the uh, by the fans by is done now. Done. Uh, the players will vote on December nineteenth. They'll players announce the team, players and coaches. Then they'll announce the team on uh, on the twentieth on the NFL Network. Correct. So you look at the Dolphins, you look at pro bowlers out there. The notes I jotted down, Wake, Sue, Landry, who am I missing or am I missing anybody? I think Jay Ajayi is going to be in the conversation. Uh, I would say Jay Ajayi, although I think he's averaged 40 yards in the last uh, handful of games. Correct, but you can't take away the two two 200-yard games. His his yard per carry average on the season is tremendous. You look at his yards after contact is tremendous. Uh, I think you got to mention him. I, I think Kiko Alonso deserves some men- consideration yeah. as well because okay. he's made a lot of plays. Um, and I'm going I'm to throw out another guy here that, that may sound crazy because he got benched early in the year and he struggled early on, yeah. but he's played really, really well the last like month and a half, and that's Byron, yeah, Maxwell. Byron Maxwell. I mean, yeah. he has really played well. It, it, it's, it's pretty amazing to watch that that transition of Byron Maxwell where – Early in the season, you're thinking, man, this this is going to be a long year over in that cornerback spot. As you said, he was benched at one point yeah. uh, and, and then was brought back out and, uh, and and has done a great job against some very talented receivers. And he's going to be the guy shadowing uh, Brandon Marshall uh, throughout the evening up at the Meadowlands here on Saturday. And so he's going to, he's going to have his hands full once again. But I think certainly when you just by doing that, you, you got to feel that there's a, a big confidence boost with the coaching staff to give him that assignment. No question. And when he did it in November, uh, Marshall finished with five catches, yep. 49 yards. It was not a factor. I mean, and he's, again, he's been lights out. Yep. Yep. Good so. stuff out there by him. So, uh, Kiko, yeah, I'm with you on that. Kiko's done a great job. The uh, the the turnovers, all those types of things, a big uh, signature game uh, with the interception for the touchdown in San Diego. Um, so, yeah, I think he's in the, in the hunt there. We'll also throw out Michael Thomas for special teams also. He leads the yeah. NFL in special teams tackle, so yeah. he deserves consideration That'd be nice. Well. That'd be nice. I mean, he's a guy that deserves it, works hard at special teams, and, yeah. uh, you know, he's, he's, he's split time in the, as, a, as a starter and, and a backup in the safety position as well as uh, uh, a special team. So, yeah, it'd be nice to see him uh, get some recognition for that. And plus, he's just a, he's a good guy. Always, yeah, well, that no. won't get him to the Pro Bowl, but always, it, it, it's, always, always it's also a, a, nice, a nice bonus. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, okay, uh, at Scooby Fins Up, Allen and Bo, who's been the most improved player on the Dolphins this season? My, well, look, I, I've, I've been asked a similar question. To me, the most improved guy during the season, to me, has been uh, Tony Lippett. I would say Tony Lippett has improved as well call. as anybody on call. this football team from the. T- I'm not talking about last year to this year. I'm talking about from the time he had to step in because of an injury 
and to where he's at right now. I think he's improved his game uh, dramatically and improved his, his stock with his football team by leaps and bounds. No question, but I'm going to go back to Maxwell. I mean, yep. because again, you're going you're going with a guy who went from being benched because he was yep. playing so poorly to now he's playing at a Pro Bowl level. You know, it was funny because a lot of people, when they made that trade with uh, Philadelphia uh, to get Maxwell and Kiko Alonso, everyone's scratching their head. What's this? They say, you know, you know, the horrible trade. And now you look at it, uh, you look at it six months down the road uh, here, and it looks like a pretty darn good move by uh, by this organization to go ahead and make that trade. It's a great trade, and the only thing you gave up was moving down five spots in the yeah. first round, and you still wound yeah, up with tons of yeah, end up getting one maybe the best player yeah. in the draft out well, of it. So. Who would they, they would have taken that eight in the heart? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. good stuff. Uh, here's a Twitter question. Oh no, F fins up one. Bo, what was the best advice any coach or teammate ever gave you? As a player, the best advice any coach gave me, you know what? It, it probably sounds elementary, but but do what you're told, you know? That's very elementary. And, and, but when I say do what you're told, you know, I go back to high school when, you know, I, when I was taught, when I was playing tight end when I was in high school, and the coach told me, you know, if you want to, you know, you, you got to, you got to double team this guy. You got to double team this guy. He goes, if you want to double team this guy, put your helmet on his hip. So what did I do? I put my helmet on his hip, and it worked. And, and ever since then, whenever a coach has told me something technique-wise or fundamental-wise, I did exactly what they said. And and for me, it it worked out. Uh, it worked out pretty well. So I just listen to coaches, listen to what they say, put it into uh, put it into play, and and do that. So that's. Uh, yeah. Obviously, worked out not, not well. hair, it worked out very well. Not for real hair raising stuff, you know, but just very simple. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's like I've been, I've, I've talked to people about business work, you know, jobs, all those kind of things. And I was doing, I was doing a, a QA with a, a group of students, high school students, uh, at one point. And um, they said, What's the most important thing that, that you could put your finger on to be successful? And you know what my answer was? Do what you're told. Be on time. Oh, it wasn't do what you're told? No, no, it was okay. be on time. Okay. Be on time. I was always being on time anyway, but but I mean, be on time. It was funny because I was talking in front of, there, there were supposed to be four of us talking in front of students. It was me and another guy that were there. And 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 both of us had, you know, had been, you know, quasi-successful after our career was over. And, and then the two other guys came in later on and... Neither one of them had jobs. They were struggling, trying to figure out what they were going to do with their lives. And oh, by the way, they were the two guys that were late. Of course. You know, so yeah. I, you know, I just well, but anyway. proved your point. Didn't I don't they? know how I got in that tangent, but I got in that tangent. And they proved uh, your point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Twitter. Do you believe our run game will take off next game versus the Jets? Well, I think. Look, I, I to me, the biggest thing that could help Matt Moore on Saturday night is for J.J. to get off in this game early and have that running game be as effective as we've seen it in in in, in previous weeks. And now, Jay's run hard. I mean, even last week, the week before, uh, he run against Baltimore, he's been running really hard, breaking tackles, doing a lot of things. But you get behind in Baltimore, for example, and you and you got to kind of take get away from the running game, although they stayed with it a little bit towards the end of the game. But I, but I think him getting off – and being successful early in the game and the run game in general, because look, they're not afraid to put Damian Williams back there. Uh, Kenyon Drake, they're they're looking at him a little more, giving him some snaps back there. So I think with that trifecta back there, if you can get this running game going, that that may be Matt Moore's best friend going into this football game. But another another big key is don't give up on it if it doesn't work well, because yep. the first time they played the Jets, Jay wound up with over 100 yards. Yep. But most of it came in the second half because they stuck with it. But but I think that's I think when you you look at this, they, they've there have been games where they've got away from it. But they always come back to it late in the game. I think uh, I think Adam Gaze believes in in the in the thought you just threw out there that hey stay with it stay with it it may not be successful one through three but you get in that fourth quarter if you continue to stay with it that's where that's usually where you get to get some of your big plays come up and it was a game a few weeks ago when this first play in the in the first drive in the second half and and a Jai rips one off for about fifty two yards back at home against uh, was it Buffalo or who was it San Francisco oh, maybe. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> San Francisco, he, they're all blending in together, my yeah, friends. They are, yes. They're all blending in together at this point. Uh, Alfre Alfe Alfredo Robles, how do you think Moore will do? Will his rush show? Um, Matt Moore's been around here a long time. Uh, he's been out there, but he hasn't been playing in games since, what, uh, 2011 was the last mm -hmm. time he played? 
He's played once for uh, Ryan Tannehill for that, the, with that the Jets. Started, that, started. that was a start, but yeah. he played with the Jets two or three years ago for maybe, what, a series? Uh, series maybe? He, he didn't finish the game, did he? attempts. I think it, Tannehill's rookie year, he got <coughs> hurt against the Jets. Yeah. And Tannehill played most for the second half. Yeah. Uh, but it's just, this is his first start since the 2011 season. So, but so look, look, I mean, I mean, Bo, it's it's not like the guy hasn't picked up a football no, in no, five absolutely. years. No, no, absolutely. He just hasn't started a game. Right. Um, so we'll and, and look, it, it'd be one thing to me if he was a guy that was a, a first-year player, a second-year player, backed up that hadn't played in a game. But this guy's been around for nine years. He's played in games. He started games. He knows what it's all about. He knows what it takes to to play at this level. And so I, I'm not I'm, – I'm not concerned about – the one thing I, I, that concerns me about Matt is that he does tend to want to get that ball out there and throw it up, and sometimes the ball's up for grabs. But, hey, that's, that's, that's a lot of guys out there. No question about that. Your, your thought on what you expect to see out of Matt Moore? I think he'll do fine. I mean, and, and Coach Case has done a tremendous job the entire year yep. of, of setting up his game plan to take full advantage – of, of Tannehill when he was out there and did a great job of maximizing what Tannehill do, does well. Yep. Why would it be any different with Matt Moore quarterback? His no, skill set's different thing, than yeah. Ryan's, but Gase has already shown the ability yeah. to you know to formulate the game plan to maximize. And, and you guy, sit so. down with him and say, hey, what are, what are what are these plays are you most comfortable with? What's your, which which of these plays do you like? Which do you feel like you you can execute the best? And then you you put those and accentuate them in your game plan. Well, except that Matt that Gase told us that Matt will say yes to everything. Well, he well no, then so, uh, all that means but, is you got to all that means is your game plan becomes this thick yeah, instead so of be instead thick. of this thick. So anyway. Um, all right, let's. Uh, you're watching the Audible here. If you're watching on Periscope, you can send your questions in via Twitter. Just hashtag the Audible. Uh, it is the uh, the Audible sponsored by Ticketmaster. You can see us on a delayed basis on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page beginning tomorrow, a rebroadcast, and you can see us on MiamiDolphins.com. And oh, by the way, if you're looking for tickets for a concert, where would you go? Of course, yes, that would be the place. There you go. Um, at Hooked Up Joe, can we adjust the run game? to account for a weak center and having B.A. and Tunsil hurt. Well, I'm not, you know, as far as the run game is concerned, I'm, I'm not worried about Brandon Albert and Tunsil. I thought they did a pretty good job uh, last week as far as run protection is concerned, or their, their run blocking is concerned. Uh, you like to see a little help maybe in, in pass protection. But the center is, a, is an issue. It's become a little bit of, of an issue. <coughs> you know, it's almost like the longer, like, like the longer you play, the more people – watch tape of them, see what they can do, and begin to take advantage of, of whatever shortcomings uh, that Anthony Steen may have. So it's certainly something that he's going to have to work on this week. But, you know, every, every time you see something where a player kind of gets called out a little bit or, or starts getting this, you, you usually see a bounce-back game from him sure. because his concentration during the week is going to be better. And when he goes out in the football field, uh, he, he's going to make sure that uh, for whatever his shortcomings have been, he's going to do, do the job to try to, to make that not be an issue. No question about it. Plus, it's not as if they can't just provide him some, with some help. If yeah. he has issues blocking guys one on one, then all of a sudden you double team a guy, and then, especially with the front that the Jets have, yeah. you may see a lot of that anyway. Yeah, and, and, and look, there's no question the Jets are going to test him as much as they can. No, no question about that. Uh, Rom at Romario Triple D D D D Double Deluxe. I'm not sure what D D D stands for, and all he says is a very nice, very pleasant hello from Ukraine. Let me ask you a question. I mean, he would know because he's from Ukraine. Is it hello from Ukraine or hello from the Ukraine? I don't, I'm not. I'm not Ukrainian. I don't know. Yeah, but you're a, you're a journalist. You're you 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 you're a wordsmith. I believe you study it's, it just part. would be strictly Ukraine. Ukraine. But hello from Ukraine. Well, hello back from uh, hello back from Davy. How's that one? I'm from the Davy. From the Davy. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Alan, who is the most interesting Miami Dolphin player that you've ever met? How long have you been around the Dolphins? First game I covered was 1985 Ooh. against the New York Jets at the Orange Bowl. Dolphins came back to win 21-17. Uh, you know who I would tell you in a, in a without spending too much time thinking about it? I, I'd say Mark Dixon. Yeah. He was, he was, he was a good so guy. interesting. Yeah. He was a good guy. Yeah. And in fact, there was a local newspaper who – whose writer was told, stop going to Mark Dixon for every story that has, deals with a general theme. Right. Because that's who they would go to because right, the guy right. was so interesting. Right. Uh, no, but he, he was and tremendous. He was, he was willing to talk. And, uh, and for an offensive guard, for an offensive guard, uh, he may have been the best basketball player on the team. That's, that's what I heard. And, yeah. and you looked at him, he did not have the no. body of somebody you would think would be a good basketball <laughs> Absolutely player. Absolutely not. But, yeah, he's definitely a good guy. No question about that. Uh, all right. Uh, 
Joe, Joey Bag of Donuts. Bo, how did cold weather affect you when you played? I hated it. I, mean, I grew up in Northern California. I've lived in South Florida. I've lived in two places in my life, San Jose, California, and uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So I'm a little climatically deprived. Um, and when it comes to cold weather, I, I just try to gut my way through it. I don't think I don't. I really can't think of many really cold weather games where I felt like I played really good. I think I played some good, but I don't think I played many really good because I, I was just trying to get done, trying All to get right, off the field. You. Hockey on the pond. The, the cold weather is very good for it. Yes, yes, but not for not for football. No. Uh, Thirty-eight double D lover Bo. What offensive uh, modifications do you envision besides a heavier reliance on the run? Um, I'm going to be interested to see. I'm going to interested to see the kind of uh, passing game that they incorporate with Matt back there. I'm, I'm interested to see if there's more downfield throws or if they kind of keep it uh, keep it close, play it close to the vest early on, or or how they're going to go ahead and and handle things with uh, with Matt Moore back there. Well, right off the bat, I'm not sure I agree with the premise of a heavier reliance on the run. I don't, I'm not sure I buy that. I can tell you the one modification I would expect is no zone read plays with Matt yeah. Moore. No, uh, no, absolutely not. Because well, no, no. That, that's not his that, forte. That, that, getting, that, that Ryan getting out of the pocket and yeah, that little crossing no. routes, I don't, I don't see that happening either. Uh, not Matt's going to stay, Matt's gonna stay in, the, in the warmth of that pocket uh, all night long as much as he can. Now, he'll run a little bit if he has to, but he's not going to be – not, not, not near what we've seen with, uh, with Ryan Tanner. No, it's no longer a weapon for the offense. No, no. Uh, at King Edlin, Stills is currently our number one wide receiver and is having an impact season. Do we re-sign him soon? Stills is an interesting guy. I mean, he uh, last year when he came here, his first year, uh, just really didn't see a whole lot of production out of him. And, and I think he was a little uncomfortable in the scheme and everything that was going on. And but I think he's really blossomed this year. He's certainly become a great receiver. He, he's made some of the made some of the best catches that we've seen. Made some of the great adjustments. But I think the I think the one thing that you don't see in him is how much his blocking and and and, and stuff like that downfield downfield has really helped this entire offense, passing game, uh, running game, every every aspect of it. I think what he does away from the football at times has been as valuable as what he's done with the football. He's also very valuable because he's your deep threat. I mean, yeah. he, he's, he's the guy you can send over the top on every single play, and, and the Dolphins have used that very well. I don't know about number one receiver because you can make a case no, for, I'm, I'm for not, Parker, I'm, make a case for Jarvis yeah, Landry. Yeah, yeah. But the, the thing is, I would like to see him resign because with, with him, with Parker, guys, and Landry, they have a great – not only yeah. are they three three good players, they, it's a great mix. Yes. Because you have yeah, a little got, bit of everything yeah. there. Look, look, and, and then, look, you add to that – uh, Leonte Carew next year coming back, give him another training camp, another offseason, OTAs, and all that stuff. And and who knows what he's going to be, a big, strong guy that, that can really add a fourth guy to that receiving core yeah. for you uh, and be somebody. I, I look, I'm all in on Kenny Stills. Uh, I you know I don't know what his – how long has he signed for? I don't – I usually don't get he's into free, that. He's a free agent after this Okay, season. so I would look, – look, I'd, there are a lot of – there. you know, I certainly would love to see him come back. Andre Branch, what's his uh, – He's a free agent after this season. He's a free agent after this season. He's another guy I'd uh, – Look, some of those guys, I wouldn't mind them resigning them now. sooner than later. Well, no, correct. I mean, and then obviously you can't resign everybody. That's just not no. realistic. But there are certain guys who become priorities, and I think Stills has made it, has made himself a priority. Yeah. There's Andre Branch certainly has made himself no, a priority no at this point. So. And, and look, but look, this is a team that's taken really in the in the free agent periods over the last what half a dozen years. They they've jumped in head first and, and put the big money down on the table. Right. You know. This might be the situation where the Dolphins say, hey, you know what, let's respect our free agents. Let's get our guys yeah. under the under the cover, and then we'll worry about what's out there. And to me, I think this team, free agent-wise, uh, unless there's a big bruising linebacker that falls in your lap there that you can grab – other than that, I would say you know free agency. Let's go for the let's go for depth. Let's kind of kind of fill depth out on this off on this uh, on this football team, and, and then throw our chips in the draft and see what happens there. That would be no, that's a good, well. Here's the thing: is they've established themselves now as a, as a good solid team. Yes. They're eight and five, so they don't have as many holes. Yep. I mean, they do have some holes, but maybe not as many as they have. Yeah, but look, they they, they look uh, they to me they've filled some holes. 
you know, you remember coming into the season, the secondary and the cornerbacks in, in, in particular yep. was a huge question mark going in. And now you get Xavier back. Now you go through the offseason. And look, you, you feel good about uh, about Byron Maxwell. You feel good about Tony Lippett. You feel good about Xavier Howard. You, you find yourself in a position now. Bobby McCain you know, is doing some good things for you out there. Now you go, you know, with those guys having that many, gotten that many snaps and that much experience, you go from an area of question to where now you kind of go in the offseason going, hey, we're, we're, in a pretty good, we're in a pretty good shape there now. Right. now. Obviously, maybe you go out and you grab someone along the way if you think there can be improvement. But uh, but I think they've they've taken some of those areas that you thought going into the season were going to be areas that you really had to address during this offseason, this coming offseason, and some of those answers have been questioned. Or some of those questions have been answered. Correct. Yes. No, and especially at quarterback, as you mentioned, because of the improvement of Tony Lippett and because of I – mean, we still don't know exactly what we have in, in Xavier Howard because yep. he really hasn't played, but what he showed early on before yep. he got hurt was really impressive. Well, he was you – know, look, to, to not practice at all during the preseason, you know, get one little – get a little stint in the preseason yeah. game, the last preseason game, and then come out and play as well as he did, yeah. I think it tells you the type of player that he can be. Now, the question with him, Xavier Howard, is going to be – when does he play this year? Does he play this week? Does he play next week? I think he's right on that, right in that cusp. Well, and then Coach Case and, and Vance Joseph have said for the past couple of weeks, yeah. it's basically we've reached a point where Howard has to tell him, okay, I'm ready to go. Yeah. And not quite. They're, they're talking that maybe this is the week, but we'll, obviously yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, at uh, Superfans2335, Moore is not bad at all. I'm feeling good about him. I think we've kind of both talked about that. Same thing. Uh, at Mainman305, will Matt Moore bring a more up-tempo game? I, I don't think so. I, I, you know, I think Adam's kind of got away from that, that up-tempo from the standpoint of no huddle, this and that, unless you get in a situation like L.A. where you need to do it at the end of a football right. game. I think he'd like guys to break the huddle and get the line of scrimmage quick and get the play off. All right. But I think the whole what the what the the, the traditional up tempo no huddle I, I don't know that that's really in in his uh, in his mindset at this point. No, and I don't see any major need for it either. No. I mean, what they've been doing has been working pretty yeah. well. Uh, at Sam Jace, do you think Matt will win these two games? Um, you know, I, I I I'm not I'm not really big at, at, at picking <clears throat> if they're going to win games or not because I know I know when you start thinking feeling good about that and you, you get kind of chopped down at the legs so. Uh, can he win those? Do I think Matt will win these two games? I really, I really don't know. I really don't know. I got to go out and play and, I, I, and see what. There's too many. I wasn't uh, aware he was the only player. Too playing. many. No, it shouldn't be the dog. Well, the Dolphins win these two. Yeah, games. Yeah, but you know. No, I, I hear you. But. You know, you. Uh, how many times do you get? <clears throat> how many fan comments do you get when you when you write articles? All the time. How many questions like that do you get? Not not. Not that often. But I mean, there is so there is so specifically about Matt Moore. No, 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 I, no, no, I, no. But I understand no, what no, he's no. getting. No, no, no. I'm at. just about something where someone says, "Hey, you know, if uh, you know, if, if uh, Tony Lippett has a great game, we're sure to win this one, or yeah. that kind of stuff." Yeah. You know, it's, will, will they win? Will they win? If if I right. if I knew, I wouldn't be in this business. I'd be doing <laughs> exactly. something else. You know, <laughs> we'd be in Las Vegas yeah, right yeah, now, exactly. making, making a ton of money. Uh, at uh, Light in the Dome, Bo, what are your feelings about the Jets rivalry? When you played, I, I used to love playing against the Jets. I, I absolutely loved it. When I first got in the league, uh, we played them at uh, at Shea Stadium, which I lo absolutely love playing at Shea Stadium just because, you know, I came in the league, Allen. it was – I wanted to play where Joe Namath played. I wanted to play where uh, Johnny Unitas played. You know, I wanted to play at all those places. I wanted, I wanted to walk in the stadium and play on the same field that those guys did. So uh, – I got to do that at Shea Stadium. I got to do that at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. I got to do it in uh, in Minnesota for Joe Cap, where Joe Cap played. And Fran, although I was playing against Fran Tarkin at the time, uh, but uh, about playing the Jets rivalry, the Jets rivalry has always been to me. It's one of the great rivalries. You look at Oakland, Denver. Uh, you know, you look at the Cowboys and the Giants. Um, you look at Pittsburgh and Baltimore, Pittsburgh and Cleveland. I, I think it rivals all those all those rivalries. I think I think it's as is long lasting and is uh, and is I don't want to I don't know that bitter is a word but I think it's I think it is, is it is a it is a verifiable rivalry. It's always more fun when both teams are good though. Yeah. And, and this year the Jets are not holding up their end of the bargain. Yeah, but you know what? Look at the you know I mean, look at I, I go back to when the Jets the Jets were playing and uh, when the Dolphins had a chance to go to the playoffs and Brett Favre's their quarterback and mm -hmm. they knock him off up there at the Meadowlands to win that football game. You may have the answer to this. Who was the defensive lineman that intercepted a pass in that game? 2008, Philip was Merling. Philip Merling. I knew you'd know. <laughs> you know all that stuff. I knew you'd know that. Uh, but yeah, I think it's. I, I look. 
the thing that made the rivalry great for me when I was playing is there are a lot of guys in that football team we knew. Bob Baumhauer went to school with Richard Todd. We became friends with Richard. Uh, A.J. Dewey uh, went to school with Dan Alexander, who was their left guard. Um, we knew guy. We we knew guys. A lot of those guys came. I knew a guy, Tom Newton. I played against. Or played with in junior college. He played for that football team. And then during the off season, a lot of those guys would come down here, and we'd see them in Fort Lauderdale, go fishing with them. So yeah. to me, a rivalry is better when you're playing against guys that you know. That's true. And, and and you know you can have a little. There's, there's a little extra to the uh, to the jab when it's over with. You know. So I. I I enjoyed I enjoyed playing the Jets. The thing now the, is, the thing now is the code. The Jets have a ton of coaches who used to be here, from yeah. Todd Bowles to Chan Gailey to yeah. Casey Rogers. Yeah. yeah, Casey Rogers, Chan Gailey. Chan Gailey's gonna go forever and ever and ever. Huh? Yep. Yeah. All right, uh, Twitter. Do you think uh, Gaze <clears throat> will trust Jakeem Grant returning punts again this season? I, I, he has said that he is. Now I think last week with the rain and everything, I think that was a that was a uh, no trust Jakeem game under those conditions. But on Saturday night, we may be may very well be facing uh, as bad or, or yeah. worse conditions. So I, my guess would be on Saturday night, if it's those kind of conditions, then then I think you see Jarvis back there again. I agree. And then the following week, you're at Buffalo, where yep, chances are the weather is not going to be very good. Yep. So um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, at uh, Piero Signon, Signon, Signon. Where is Mario Williams in the defensive rotation, defensive line rotation? He's the same place in the defensive line rotation that I am right now. He ain't in the defensive line rotation right now. First of all, he's injured. I don't think they're real happy with the way he's played. I don't think his production has been at the level that they expected or wanted it to be. And they've done a pretty good job with the rotation they've got. They've got now. I think we talk about Andre Branch, the job that he's done. Uh, I think when you get um, um, Jordan Phillips playing well, and then the, the defensive tackle with the calf injury, Earl Mitchell. You get Earl Mitchell in there. That's a that's a nice rotation in there in the defensive tackle position. Um, I, I think they're pretty well set with that rotation that they're at right now. I don't think there's any any reason to disrupt it with Mario Williams. I just don't I, think it's going to happen. I, I could see if he's if he's healthy. Uh, enough to play Saturday night where he could get 15, 15, 20 snaps. snaps. Yeah. That, that may be that neighborhood, yeah. but he's not a significant part of yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. All right, Alan, that's going to do it for today. Appreciate you joining us. Anytime. This is the Audible presented by Ticketmaster. If you're looking for tickets, any concert, right there, Ticketmaster. What do you think, Sunday night or Saturday night? What do you think? I thought we weren't making predictions. I'm not. I'm just saying, what do you think? I think this is a game the Dolphins. Can win, should win. I mean, they're a much better team than the Jets. You heard it right there. He's picking the Jets. He's picking the Dolphins over the Jets. I'm going to stay. I'm going to play a dead hand in this one. I'm going to leave it out there. All right. For Leon Logan, Trey, Squatch, Jeff back there. Excellent show, Leon. Excellent show, my friend. Smooth as silk. I'm not sure if it was you or Alan that made it that way. But anyway, what is it? Oh, Trey made it that it way. Trey. It was Trey. There you go. Thank you very much, Trey. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure being with you today. I'll see you on Friday. Friday, though, my man Jeff's back there. Friday, I think we're going to be on a little early, right? Jeffrey, are we, is, it, is it early Friday? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. That's the uh, at Diaz in the morning. We'll be on. All right, we'll see you then. Have a good couple days. Stay safe. We'll see you on Friday.